Okay, hello everyone. This next talk will be about DevConf 10. This is Holger. Um, please uh, crouch if you're going to pass in front of the camera. If you want to ask any questions, please ask for the microphone first. Say your name and while you're talking, please look to the camera and smile. <laughs> Hi. My name is Holger Liefsen, and I'll actually not give a talk today, but rather it's very short, very few slides about why we do DebConf, how we decide on a venue, and then the idea is that if people are here who made proposals, um, that they present them shortly. And that what we do today here is that we define a timeline until we want to decide when, where DebConf 10 is held. Um, yeah, that's what I just said. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, dead, the timeline basically is the deadline until we want to have the proposals finished, the deadline to find the decision, and the deadline for defining the decision process. And <coughs> yeah. So why do we do DebConf? For many reasons, obviously. There's not a single one. They are somewhat ordered by pri priority. Um, the first and most um, pr um, priority is to get work done on Debian. Um, together. It's also the other main um, goal of DebConf is to educate each ourselves with talks and workshops. Um, DebConf should be a, fa a chance to meet face to face, to socialize, to party also. Not to party, that's the other thing. Um, to, to develop social bonds and to brainstorm new ideas. And party is of course a means to um, get together. And also to improve the motivation of the individuals and the teams. Um, of course, we also want to boost the local community and to have fun, um, but that's a um, bit, bit lesser goals, and not really goals are that we provide free food and accommodation so that at least the people who work on it get something back from, from the project. Um, that is all. We, we, we wrote that down, I think, for in 2006, when we discussed about where DebCom 7 should be held, mm -hmm. that we, we thought that we um, write down why we do it. It's also on the wiki and slash why. And we have this location checklist with different items which are important to hold um, a DebConf that is just copied and pasted from the list, except that I um, changed this special rooms to special Debian conference room, rooms. We, want, we need a server room, we need a um, place for the video team, we need a front desk, um, these kind of things. Ah, put again. Um, so the location checklist is we need a strong local team that is really important for us. Um, then the, the place itself, we need conference facilities, food for quite a big number of people with some special requirements, network connectivity, um, because without network we cannot work. Um, we need, need a place to sleep for all the attendees, and there should also be some fun and free time activities possibly, so it should not be in a complete desert island, whatever. And local sponsors are also a plus. Um, the timeline, I, I think we should def define, decide a timeline today after uh, which we can follow. And my suggestion is that we, we have a deadline for proposals at the end of this year, 31st, sent in by mail, documented on the wiki, whatever. Um, a deadline for the decision should be April 1st, that this is really the deadline but we should aim to make a decision on March 1st so that we have two months to discuss the proposals and then one month to have a for whatever flame word decide. <laughs> um, and we also need to decide um, how, we, how we decide. Uh, and I would say we, we um, document the procedure until the end of this year also and that the preferred way is rough consensus. Um, 
which was basically the way we choose this location and the next one. Uh, and there were no competitors for DevConf 9. For DevConf 9, not yeah, not, not real ones. It was, okay, this looks so brilliant, we take it. <laughs> um, and if that doesn't work, then we use the procedure as we had for DevConf 7, which is basically an IRC meeting with the votes of the involved people and by priority. That is somewhere written and I would like to put it um, somewhere we can find it again. Like there has also been, Murray has started to um, write down what he learned as, as doing DEPCOM 7 as a local team, that is in the wiki. And so that we start, we always had pages for, the, for a specific DEPCONF and that we start to document the procedures needed for each DEPCONF. Yeah. Um, do you think this timeline makes sense? Um, do you want to repeat it for? Yeah, I was just saying, I guess it, the timeline product decision could also be kind of up to the cities which are interested in having it um, as to how long they feel that they need to prepare a sensible bid. I mean, if, if, both, if all the cities in question felt that they were ready tomorrow, then we could decide earlier possibly. But. Um, we, we used, we, two years ago, I think, we wanted to decide two years in advance and we, we learned that it's too much time and so I propose this change also. But every, nobody seems to disagree. Should we take it for the next five years? So we stop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about the same thing every year. That's <laughs> fun. <laughs> I'm Martin. Uh, I think that in any case uh, the decision and everything should not be postponed <coughs> too much because it's really good uh, to to start preparing a lo long time in advance. It's a lot of work, so let's, let's not delay it too much. Okay, so be it. This is the timeline for DEPCONF 10, 11, 12, 13, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we can also change it next year again. <laughs> Until we decided, want to discuss it again. Wonderful. So, as far as I know, there are three proposals um, ordered in alphabetically order <laughs> by country. Um, I don't know if Gunnar wants, or yeah, let's start with them, I think. I don't know what time is it? Ten minutes past. We have plenty of time, basically. Fine. But I would say let's keep it maximum ten minutes so that we can have in the end a bit discussion. I think that's this with my slide also, so there's nothing more. I'm not, I'm not prepared to hold anything here yet. Fine. Boston, New York, San Francisco, Portland, Bo Cambridge, whatever, <laughs> Washington, <laughs> Texas. <laughs> you want the projector? Yeah, you want the projector? It's 10 minutes per country, not per city.
While he's doing that, I'm Jimmy Kaplowitz. Uh, this is Michael Schulteis, two of the people organizing the New York bid. Um, I'll uh, wait until he gets this fixed. Good. All right. So, yeah, all right. All right, so we propose to hold DEPCONF 10 in uh, New York City. Um, it's, a, it's a major world city. It's uh, over 8 million residents. Um, a lot of tours come there from all over the world. Um, you see some numbers there. It's uh, 46 million per year and growing. Um, easy air access, lots of different airports. Um, there's the three mentioned there, uh, JFK, Newark, and LaGuardia, and there's more in nearby cities. Um, most of the world can get there really cheaply, m much more so than a lot of possibilities for DEPCON. Um, the it, it, cheaply and quickly also from where most Debian developers live. Um, the currency is relatively weak, so for those who use other currencies, um, it's you know a relatively inexpensive place. Uh, I I see lots of European tourists there every day, walking around speaking languages like French and Spanish, and uh, <laughs> so um, it's. Pretty quick to get from the airports. Two of them are in New York City, and one of them has public transit that takes you right there in a half an hour. Um, so it's really close. Um, right. Um, the public transit in New York City is not like the rest of the US. The public transit in New York City is a uh, European quality. It uh, runs all the time. It, um, it, uh, it goes everywhere you want to go. It, it, trains and buses run frequently. Um, lots, much of the subway and many potential venues and um, and places you'd want to go are handicap accessible too. Lots of things going on all hours of the night and day. Um, places to shop everywhere, places to see for day trips, Statue of Liberty, Empire State Building, parks, so forth. English is clearly the language, it's the US. Um, there's lots of people who speak Spanish in shops and uh, you know, just generally around, so most people here ha have some English and some have also Spanish, so you'd be fine. Um, if we go to a non-English speaking country, that would be that kind of eight, nine, and 10 in a row where those who don't know the local language wouldn't have a language to communicate in. Um, whereas everyone here knows at least some English. Also, there's a very active local community for free and open source software. There's two different lugs, and there's PHP, and there's Ruby, and there's Perl, and there's BSD, and so forth. I'm sure we can get some of them in, maybe get Evan Moglin to do a keynote or something. Um, so as for where uh, to hold it, certainly housing in New York City is expensive. So we're looking at universities as options. Um, we know people like Biela at NYU, we know people like Evan Moglin at Columbia, and we have multiple people involved with local team uh, and Debian NYC at Polytechnic University in Brooklyn. Um, also, Brooklyn College hosted a GNOME Summit five years ago, so they seem to be open to this sort of thing. And at least Poly, I've heard, is quite inexpensive. Someone mentioned uh, like $35 a night per person for a double occupancy uh, dorm room. Uh, and for New York City, yes, that is cheap. Um, usually it's in the hundreds of some sort. Um, lots of options. Wikipedia has a list of about 50 universities and colleges. And someone else mentioned that either in the city or not too far outside of it, there are corporate training facilities uh, that companies use for various purposes and that might be suitable for a conference. Um, 
we probably have people stay in dorms. Uh, there's also hostels, and for those who want to pay more hotels, um, we even have one of the hostels mentioned on our wiki already. Um, and bandwidth is a nice aspect to our bid. Um, we have fast bandwidth. Uh, you know, m much of the internet runs through New York. There's lots of great connections. The universities generally have internet two and 100 megabit connections available, so sh it shouldn't be a problem. Um, you know, everyone is uh, aware that the U.S. is sort of the world's bogeyman right now. Um, getting into the U.S is not the easiest, but it's more possible than you might think. Citizens of 28 countries besides the US, including Canada and most of Europe, do not require a visa to come to the US. You know, Mexicans, you know, I was speaking to one during this conference and apparently they have visas that are valid for 10 years and they don't have to get it for every trip. Um, the processing times for getting a visa for those countries that do require it very wildly depending on the country, but for most of them, they are rather short, such as, you know, as I said, it, the total process from start to finish can be within a month. And every country where DEF CONF is held or will be held has had similar issues with visas and entrance issues for some people in the world. Some people can't make it for financial reasons, travel reasons, immigration reasons. There's a, whether the EU or Argentina or wherever, there's always some of that that happens. Um, People are worried about a few specific issues specific to the U.S. The Customs and uh, Border Patrol, not the TSA, uh, does the searches for people entering the U.S. And uh, the ability to search your laptop and maybe seize it. Um, the exact details vary from country to country, but it's, it's similar in some other countries Maybe they can seize it at the border. Maybe they can search it and refuse you entry. Maybe it can be seized without a court order once you're in. I know some Western countries allow you, the police to demand your encryption keys, and it's a crime if you refuse. Um, so I'm not a fan of this policy, but there's similarly stupid policies that affect us all in most countries. Um, as far as security checkpoints go, shortly after September 11th, 2001, People, yes, waited in line for three, four hours for international flights. It was not pretty. Nowadays, it, I went through my international flight to come here. I went through a check screen, security screening in less than 10 minutes at a major airport in the New York City area. Um, they don't screen citizens separately from non-citizens on the way out for that, so that would apply to you too. Um, the official airline recommendations for an international flight are something arrive maybe an hour and a half early at peak times or even, even sooner before the flight, um, you know, less time uh, at other times. It's really not a big deal anymore. Uh, they still have stupidities, but they're all very easy to handle. And I've heard a few people mention to me the case of Dmitry Sklyarov, who got arrested uh, coming to the U.S. to present a talk on, on his uh, e-book cracking software for his Russian company. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is that the U.S. was not actually arresting him for doing this cracking in Russia. The, the U.S. was arresting him because his company sold this thing which violated U.S. law from U.S. servers on their website was hosted in the U.S. And so I'm not a fan of this policy either, but it is not a case of the U.S. applying its law to foreigners. It's a case of the U.S. applying its law to people who use resources in the U.S. to violate U.S. law. So if you're not doing that, shouldn't affect you. Um, now, we shouldn't count too much on what politicians will do, and I know that, I'm not naive in this regard, but m m most likely the new government that'll take office after the 2008 elections starting in January 2009, there's a reasonable chance, especially if it's, uh, you know, especially if it's Obama, but there's a reasonable chance that they'll institute less harsh policies and things may improve by the time the conference rolls around. It, I'm not going to say they're going to go back to how they were before President Bush. I'm not going to say they're not going to change at all. They'll probably you know, vary in unpredictable ways, but overall I expect at least some of this craziness to be rolled back. Some will remain, but don't assume it'll be as bad as it is now, which is already a lot better than September 11th and shortly thereafter. Um, now, another aspect is 
lately, you know, DevConf has been in places that are somewhat hard for North Americans to get to, and interest from North Americans has been declining in coming to DevConf. Um, you know, some of them can't spend the money or do the travel or what have you to go to Europe, Asia, South America. Um, but m it's much easier to get to New York City, especially for people on the U.S. East Coast, but even for the West Coast people and in between. Um, so this would revitalize U.S. interest in DevConf and probably Canadian too. Um, once you come to DevConf, you realize how awesome it is and you know how great everyone is and what a wonderful experience. And that'll probably make U.S. and Canadian people more likely to come to the rest of the world for future DevConfs. Um, so we already have, oh, time's up apparently. We are really near the end. Um, just have to mention the local team, so I'm not gonna read the names then. Um, but we have, as you can see, several experienced people who have experience either in Debian or at DevConfs or organizing conferences or a mixture. Uh, so, so we definitely have a strong base from which to build. That's it. Jimmy? Hi. Just one quick question. Um, you have the local team there. Um, sorry about that. Um, you have the local team there. Is there a leader in that team? Right now, no. I mean, I'm, I'm the one who, who's been taking the lead recently in organizing the bid. But we, haven't, we don't have a, a defined organizational structure. Um, I imagine different people will take the lead in different regards, such as there's a couple of other people who have spe special connections to uh, Polytechnic University who have organized conferences there before or who are alums. And you know, we'll probably divide up the roles as appropriate. Hi, you, you've got details about New York. I mean, obviously, there's been some discussion already about maybe other cities in the US. Any thoughts about those? Um, well, as far as I could tell, the, the pages on the wiki about Boston and San Francisco were simply parodies of the New York page. Uh, they're both very worthwhile cities to hold a conference in. I'm not knocking them, but I'm, I'm not aware of any other city in the U.S. where someone has actually prepared a serious bid. Uh, if you want to talk about it, that's fine. Um, but I'm not aware of any other serious, serious bid that's been prepared in New York, in, in the U.S. Okay. New York is better than places like Portland for travel. Boston is good also, so is San Francisco. Those are both not quite as good as New York in, as far as travel costs. Cheaper from Europe. Cheaper from Europe, yes. New York is cheaper from Europe. Right, I mean, from uh, the first thing I'd suggest is it's possibly worth you and a bunch of the other American DDs, if you, know, if you do want to push a serious bid, actually work out amongst yourselves um, and st start some real discussions. But yeah, thanks for your time uh, anyway. So is some, someone here from Venezuela? No one? <coughs> Can I ask a question? Um, you mentioned a bunch of people in the local team. Uh, one experience that we gained by doing DevConf is that you need a tight united local team. It's not like just list a bunch of people that live in New York. It's not enough. No. Uh, can you go back to the local team slide, please? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, most of these people already know each other and, you know, visit each other on occasion. Um, and I don't, I mean, that's certainly we're not currently very organized as far as the local team. We do have a lot of experience organizing. And if I'm not mistaken, some past DevCons have turned out very successfully with that. Um, we're, we're definitely going to uh, you know, organize quickly if there's some interest. 
Okay, uh, well, that's not what I meant. First of all, I have to say it, he, he already insulted me on planet, so I'm not going to disguise it. I really think listing the mock there uh, drops points from you because uh, he didn't help DevCon 6, he unhelped, really. He created more work for us who were not local team who had to do the stuff that he didn't do. I took his word for that. It, I, I, I understand, I know, I don't expect you to know this, so I'm okay. telling you, really unlist him. It, he's not going to help you. Uh, for the other people, uh, I, well, most of them, the, the ones I know, yes, we can trust them, but that's not my point. My point is you have to be united. You have to be like a tight group because organizing DevConf is very stressful. I understand. And yeah. it requires the capacity of, of trusting on the other person, like he's going to do the job and he's going to do it well, and if he has a problem, he will <coughs> fix it or whatever. So, All right. so yeah, it's, you, sh you can't really do it with scarce people distributed and that, yeah, yeah. we know we work, I, I, but they're not a tight group. I think that's a really good point. This is BDL in the back of the room. I, I think that our goal today should be to sort of listen to the current state of these proposals and some of these uh, things that we're asking as questions and, and raising as suggestions are things that we would hope the teams tape, take back and use to uh, improve their proposals between now and the end of the year, which I think Holt suggested would be our, our deadline for, for uh, uh, accepting submissions. And if there are other teams that are interested possibly uh, hosting the event that, that look at the existing uh, proposals, whether they are, are real or spoof, and uh, make some decision that they think they could do a better job or have a, a better offer, I think we would certainly love to, to see additional proposals. Um, I, I certainly think this is an interesting idea. We've talked about it some, and it seems like the, the principal negative on the New York proposal is this concern about the uh, immigration issues. And that seems like it, it's potentially a manageable issue. Um, for all of the other characteristics, it seems like a, 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 for this stage of development of the proposal, like there are some reasonably good thoughts there. I will look forward to seeing this one further develop before the deadline. And I do hope we have someone from Venezuela here who can talk about the other proposal as well. So do I. Um, several people of the Orga team have already opposed to your bid. And um, it is apparent to me that if we went on a vote today, um, New York wouldn't be preferred if there are any other serious alternatives. So. Um, Hmm? Yeah, of course. Um, but I think that the Olga team should generally um, express the uh, consensus of the whole Debian developers or um, interested in DevConf anyway. Um, so I'd like to, to see how, how many in this room how, will oppose a, a DevConf in New York. Can I? I before that, I, I would like all the presenters Okay, and I, I realize that this is not a proper statistical sample, but um, I'd like to see just a poll. Maybe can I can I make a quick comment about this? Considering I was the first one to oppose. Um, well, th I'm Martin again. Um, I did not oppose. I told the team that I would have a problem to attend, and some other team members said the same thing that they would not be able to be on the Orga team. This, as far as I understand, was not and a position from the team as a whole, nor from any of its members, that this was going to happen. And I agree with you completely. Um, if you put in your bed for New York City, then it needs to be decided on merit rather than ideolo ideological whatevers. Thank you so, for the uh, handedness. <laughs> Well, uh, of course, it's uh, natural at this point to start uh, questioning whatever comes to mind. And we s started already doing the same and uh, with other uh, teams that will show their, 
their bits uh, questioning may be seen as the easiest uh, way, but I think at this point, the only thing we should do is to listen to the expositions and give some uh, months to, the, to do the questioning. Because there are many things that uh, haven't been expressed, that haven't been thought out, and uh, well, there, there's too many things still to be thought about. So I would say, everybody, please shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to yield to Venezuela if they're here. <laughs> if anyone wants more information, they can check out our wiki page, which is in the usual location. And we used one Creative Commons license image. There is the attribution. Thank you. That's only the wiki page. Yeah. This one. Yep. Well, uh, good night. First, um, I'm so sorry because my English is so bad and maybe I have problem with some words 
for try to to do the presentation. Um, when I have problem, Marga, help me. Okay. Well, we are the Debian Venezuela team, and we are try to to make the proposal for to do the deck from ten in Venezuela in Margarita Island. Margarita Island is a um, beautiful place with a uh, facility. In the wiki, we, we put um, some question. For example, uh, Margarita Island is the biggest island in Venezuela. Um, it's a very, very tourist place. And Margarita has uh, some a uh, lot of facility like the international airport, uh, a lot of big hotels, a lot of um, computer store, and a lot of big small uh, like the San Big Mall is a is a very big store. Well. Uh, Uh, that is very important because in Margarita, the, for the kind of tourists, um, all the hotels, uh, the people can speak English perfectly, and it's not a, it's not a problem. Um, that is, a, is important too, um, from the airport, to the hotel uh, is, is almost um, 30 minutes. And all the hotels can provide transportation if, uh, from the airport to the, to the hotel. Um, that is very important too. We don't have restriction for computer. We don't have restriction for importation, uh, um, question please. Juan? Do you have import regulation for cheese, please? <laughs> <laughs> No, we don't have. <laughs> we don't have a regulation for cheese. And um, for example, um, we we have regulation um, um, for some aspect like the 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 exchange, okay? Because we have a. a Official control. Uh, um, sobre control de divisas. Yeah, we have a we have a control uh, from the exchange money, but um, but it's not problem really because if if the people work close with the with the government with their regulation is is not problem okay because we have a exchange casa de cambio we have a money exchange in all airport in all the first city in venezuela it is not problem in 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 the uh a ver qué más tenemos Well, uh, we we have a we have a, a we have a um, we have experience organizing a big event. For example, the Free Software Venezuela community have a lot event like the World World Free Software World Free uh, yeah. huh? uh, uh, the free the World Free Knowledge. It's an event um, year uh, for for every year, and we have almost. 
cuatro mil, ¿cómo? Ah, ah, ok, and the free, uh, free knowledge, uh, free, free knowledge um, event, and we have almost two, uh, two thousand? Uh, two thousand, three thousand people all the years, and um, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work, but we have um, making almost five years, um, and all years the Debian community uh, organi or organize, organize, to organize uh, the Debian Day and the other free software community uh, to organize the um, ¿cómo que se llama? Uh, sí, the National Free Software Congress with almost um, 1,000 people all years. Um, we have experience uh, organizing events and we have uh, we have in, in this moment we have a very strong community uh, growing um, because we have uh, we have um, We have a, a, a ¿cómo diría? Un clima de... No. No. Sí, en este momento en Venezuela el, el software libre se usa muchísimo y... y ¿ah? ¿Ah? Yeah, the, the free software, the free software in Venezuela in this moment is... is, is It's, it's very using uh, for all the people. For example, uh, we have a, a company named Bit. And um, Bit um, is making almost uh, one million computer for every year. And one million computer every year uh, is vendida, is sold with uh, free software, is sold with uh, Debian-based distribution named Canaima. That is very important because the, the, the free software community is working close, but uh, for, for try to do a, a best distribution uh, for, for, for that equipment. So when I went to, I spent about six weeks in Venezuela in 2006 and my experience was that every Cibir that I went to ran Microsoft Windows. I, I, I was in Caracas, but also in Maturin, in Merida. Every Cibir, maybe I went to 15 or 20. I never found one that was running Linux. Is that changed now? This. Uh, Cibir is like a locutorio, a place that has computers. See, yeah, it's not a problem because... Uh, <laughs> no, uh, no, because... Um, So it's only the government because, and no, the because government try companies. try to change the, the 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 culture in the people is not easy, okay? We have a lot of years using Microsoft and the university using Microsoft and try to change the 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 culture for the people is not easy. But um, in this moment, the uh, government in the education have uh, some uh, have a lot of claim for 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 change that situation and um, for example the um, uh, los laboratorios las escuelas de the, the, the school laboratories uh, have only free software well you mean in elementary and middle school in, in public schools But in private yep. universities, most yep. of them are still Microsoft Windows. Yeah. Um, the um, um, we, we we think in 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 some years the situation uh, uh, will change. Hello, I have another question. I've read something about uh, Venezuela on Wikipedia and was impressing, and have also heard something. Uh, good, but my impression about Venezuela is it, that it is completely disconnected to the free software world. Even on this Debian conference, you people are quite close. You are sitting on one table, don't exchange with other. It, it is just me there who has this impression, or 
it is, is a problem. I, I'm just wondering. I, I would like to talk to you, but uh, the, the chances are so low. It, I think this might not be a good position for the for DebConf. Hello. Um, am I not correct in thinking that Venezuela was one of the four countries that objected to the ISO approval of OOXML? Is that correct? <laughs> so, so I think if we're comparing countries and their commitment to... They were one of the only four that actually objected to it enough to... to so well, I think if you're comparing... Uh, how committed to free software people are, then Venezuela deserves a round of applause. Um. Okay, uh, I'm Matias Ambrosio, and I have the exact opposite uh, relationship here. I have, I think, I have met every every Venezuelan, and uh, I, they were quite open. Uh, but the U.S. people have been sitting on the same table. I tried to approach them, and I could not talk to them. Uh, so I don't think that's the situation. I yeah, Perhaps it's some kind of language barrier. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel that way. Yeah, you would not. <laughs> well, my, my English is not that bad. I, I have spoken with everybody here but the, the U.S. people. Uh, I don't think it is a language barrier because at, uh, in Mexico we got drunk together and here we got drunk together and I don't speak a word of Spanish. Uh, hi, um, I, I think it could be quite important to, to, to say uh, about the potential reach of a, of a conference in Margarita. Um, I've been to Margarita and the reason I went is because it's very easy for people in Amazonas and Roraima, two very poor areas in Brazil, to travel to Margarita. There's an established, ro the only road actually out of Manaus is going north to Venezuela, to Margarita. <clears throat> so there could potentially be some quite um, enthusiastic but very underrepresented people um, given an opportunity to participate in something like DevConf by a, <coughs> by a bid from Venezuela and a successful bid from Venezuela. So um, I really hope that you guys can get something sorted really well done and uh, that Margarita can be chosen for, the, for DevConf 10. Thanks. So I have a couple of questions. One, you didn't mention you didn't mention the internet connectivity, and if it's really an island in Venezuela, I would be a bit concerned about it. Another issue is I, I did a quick look, which is not comprehensive by any means, and it looks like the only direct flights to this airport are the flights by Condor, which is Lufthansa holiday flights, and they are probably not that frequent. It's the only one I could find. So, so it looks like, like just just a thing to consider that people will have to go probably, if people are coming from Europe, they will most likely have to go through Caracas. And uh, yeah, so two, two questions about it. So one is there will be logistical problems with bringing people in through Caracas and how you're going to address that. Another is internet connectivity. OK. Um, <laughs> My name is Jose Parrella, um, my nick is Buriao. I'm not particularly involved with the organization team, but I'm, I'm trying to help them with the translation. Uh, regarding your question about the airport, it's right, the airport, uh, even if it's international, it doesn't receive a particular flight from Europe or the States. You have to go through Caracas, uh, which is not a big deal since uh, flights are usually quite cheap. Uh, I believe that you can fly from Caracas to Margarita for around $40. Um, Regarding uh, your question about connectivity, um, all of our connections go to through Cantebe, which is a national ISP and is now a state-owned, uh, state-owned state company. Um, we'll try to sort out uh, a couple of E1 connections in the island. Uh, see, but um, 
that's uh, that's uh, one of the of the biggest um, achievements that, that this team has to do in order to to get adeptconf uh, working there but there will be connectivity uh, they're trying to sort out uh, which kind of connectivity we'll have there regarding the OOXML uh, proposal actually we were one of the four countries that uh, made um, um, appeal. an appeal to the to the standard and uh, we were uh, we, we were the only one that wasn't regarded by the the standards committee as a stupid or just uh, a plain uh, nuts. Um, actually, the, the complete appeal was made by members of the free software community and the national standards body just had to, to sign it and send it to the, to the standards committee. Um, also, regarding the, the fact that uh, we're usually a, a close team that's, uh, that has part of true and, 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 and parts that are not true, um, usually, since there's a government decree that mandates the use of free and open source software in the country, and it has also been spread to the private sector of the of the economy and the market, um, we we have been doing things only in Venezuela and looking only inside Venezuela, and maybe uh, looking to some of our friend friendly countries in the in the South America uh, continent, like maybe Ecuador and maybe even Argentina and Brazil. So um, that's right, uh, we, we, we have only been doing things inside Venezuela, but we try to participate in international events like DEPCONF. We have been uh, going to DEPCONF in Mexico, and uh, I believe we are one of the most uh, numerous uh, congregation of people here at, at, at Argentina. We are uh, almost 20 people here in the conference. And in Scotland, we had uh, like 15 people. And in Mexico, we had 16 <laughs> people. So we have been uh, quite consistent with that. OK. The time is. Hello. Uh, well, my name is Lisandro. I'm studying electronic engineering. Uh, you said that you will need to have at least a couple of uh, E1 uh, connections. You will need at least five. At least five. And uh, each E1 connection in Latin America doesn't, it does, hasn't been cheap, it hasn't never been cheap. So you have to take that in account. And you will need at least five of them. Yeah, the team is aware of that. And also, uh, the standards are between 10 and 20 megabit per second. Uh, so the team is aware of that. OK, we should Christian. come to an end with this. We should make and maybe have two more questions. But um, we should close it, because we also have some more months to decide it finally and document all this on the wiki so that the questions can be ask on the mailing list, but Christian, have another question. Yeah, uh, i try to make it short. Uh, apparently, your, your proposal is based on the fact that in Venezuela, you have a strong governmental and institutional support for free software, which is obvious to everybody, I think. Is there a possibility that this support changes until 2010 because of political, local changes? Like elections. Are you looking for the magic crystal ball? <laughs> <laughs> no, not exactly. Or the general stability. <laughs> OK. Um, I don't know. See, no problem. Para el 2010, todos podemos estar muertos. Estamos mm, trabajando, de hecho, en este momento, haciendo la propuesta sin involucrar al sector del gobierno en nuestra propuesta, ya que eh, estamos mm, intentando hacer una propuesta con eh, mínimas expectativas de apoyo por parte del gobierno para que, llegado el caso, si existe apoyo oficial, entonces salga mejor. It says that the, the team is working on a proposal without uh, contemplating the possibility of working with the government. And uh, the proposal has also uh, contemplates that if the government wants to help, the, the, um, the conference will be even better. OK? Time's up. Time is up. It's closed. I think we can do the remaining.